residential estate to the northeast of Nairobi. It's a busy estate. It's also home to people from various ethnic backgrounds, people who many things bring together, and one of these things is food. Dugulas is a small eatery in the heart of Huruma. It's a favorite for many residents here, like Ismail David. Eunice, the owner of the place, is especially busy this afternoon. She tells us that part of her eatery's success is in the variety of food that she serves. The restaurant is a connecting point for many residents here who come to delight themselves in sharing a table with their neighbors. Outside the restaurant, campaign posters color the streets of Huruma. They are a reminder of a time, 10 years ago, when the area was marred by post-election violence. In the aftermath of the 2007 Kenyan presidential election results, violence erupted here, with clashes occurring along tribal lines. This road, just a few meters from Dugula's restaurant, would then act as a border with residents from the Kikuyu ethnic group confined on one side and Luos on the other. Kujumla, kwasisi, tunajari bukwe kapisimbele. Sabu ile manena tu seven ili hapi, atuizi tamanti ya nairudi ya iwa. Ili tugawanyisha sisi. Biko tunaishi kwa miaka nyingi sana, kwa watutumba kale unaona hali tuko. Tukishi tukamo brother huu. Lakini yu tuwe seven ili tutagawanyisha. Kwa kuwa sasa na odhaya, the campaign trail ahead of the 2017 general election has been heated with this election being described as high stakes for the main competing coalitions, Jubilee and NASA. Various political parties have been marshalling voters along the ethnic lines. The thing that clearly informs you is how these um, political parties that now form the two main coalitions, how they are constituted, who their followership is, um, what their what their leadership looks like, even how that leadership was arrived at, how they negotiated that leadership, you can see that it is just a response to it is it is just a um, calculation of it's it's ethnic arithmetic, it's how many what voting block can you bring and if we put these together can we then attain what we need to, which is um, um, capturing state power. Just what is the extent to which Kenyans actually get influenced by tribalism while voting? The voting pattern in Kenya, it's still on a tribal line. Yeah, we have still not reached that maturity in terms of democracy, where people vote uh, in t uh, considering the, their ideas or the ideologies that, that somebody has. Zablon Mutanyi, one of the customers at Ndugulas, says tribalism and ethnic divisions still run deep in Kenya. He says some communities bear a deep-seated feeling of marginalization and never having enjoyed a piece of the proverbial national cake. Uh, in terms of development, 
Yeah, Nyanza is still uh, down in terms of uh, infrastructure. There are still uh, no proper infrastructure that has taken place. So you can only say, if you go to Nyanza, there's uh, only roads. These major roads are available, but the, the feeder roads are not there. So that is where Unapata, even the farmers, uh, are easier to access their products to the market very easy. We must also recognize the reality. And the reality is that many communities or nations in our country have felt perennially excluded um, from particularly the executive. That is where, that is what we need to address because in my view, that is the most passionate driver of conflict. Located about six kilometers from the city center, Kibera is the largest slum in Nairobi and the largest urban slum in Africa. The Kenyan census of 2009 reports Kibera's population as 170,000, most of whom live in extreme poverty. Unemployment, poor sanitation and housing are among the long-standing challenges that residents here encounter. Everything is all right. the feeling so fun. In spite of all this, Kibera is a key political hub in Kenya. Many here are passionate supporters of the opposition. And if Kibera were a body, the Kamukunji grounds in Sarangombe ward would be its beating political heart. So, Walianza na kusudi ya kuweza kupatia wananchi nafasi ya kuweza kuongea mahali fulani na ndio kwa sababu baada ya baada ya Jaramogi Odinga kuchukua usukani naye Raila pia akaweza kurudi hii uwanja kwa sababu ya hiyo ari yake yeye mwenyewe kuweza kuwa na pale mahali ambapo yeye pia angaliita ngombe ngome yake wherever we are today is the heart of politics of the Republic of Kenya Many people come here, one, to seek blessings. Some of the people who come here cannot even address 10 people. But when they come here, the first meeting, second meeting, they get the motivation, ability, and that energy to be able to address gathering, big gatherings. So this place, again, has become a school for politicians. Political barazas are held at the grounds every week. On this particular day, we get to sit in on one of the weekly meetings. It is mostly men who attend these barazas. They say that some pretty revolutionary decisions and solutions have been arrived at here. Watu ambayo wakatika hii wanja ni watu ambao wamechangia pakubwa. Kwanza hivi majuzi, watu ambayo wakwa hii wanja, naezo wapatia kredit manake hawa ndiyo watu ambayo walifukuza tume ya isaka saa ni kaenda nyumbani. Bila wa watu wa kibira hiyo tume ya ingeenda. Kibera is largely known as a melting pot of opposition politics in the city, with Raila Odinga, the opposition's flag bearer, having been member of parliament here for 20 years. Here, politics is punctuated by cries of ethnic marginalization. <laughs> Kibera 
Deep-seated feelings of inequality reigns here in Kibera, as it does in other parts of the country which have never produced a president. Daisy says, though, that most of these feelings are as a result of calculated provocations by politicians who whip up anger to marshal votes. Ethnicity in itself is not a bad thing. It's, it's instrumentalization or how the political class, the political entrepreneurs use it and to what ends they use it. Still, here in Kibera, many believe that the reason their neighborhood is underdeveloped is because, quote-unquote, one of their own has never been at the helm of leadership in the country. In Kibera, for example, we see the, 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 the infrastructure I've talked about. There, the, we don't have good roads, the access roads. We don't, we don't have access to, to, to housing, uh, health care. We don't have health care. In fact, health care is a very big problem. We don't have good schools like the other regions. So we feel we are marginalized. But many have asked how much Raila, in his long political service, during which he also became Prime Minister of Kenya, managed to bring development to his own community. Hapo awali, Ndwale alisema, ya kwamba kibera hii, kibera hii, Raila mekua hapa kwa miaka ishirini, na kuna kitu Raila mefanya. Sisi tunataka kusema hivi kama wana kibra. Raila ndi umuanzilishi wa maendeleo hapa kibra. Na maendeleo yote yale wamejaribu kufanya, Kenya has had four presidents since independence. The first, President Jomo Kenyatta, was a Kikuyu from central Kenya. The second was President Daniel Turoitich Arab Moy, who hails from the Kalenjin community in the Rift Valley. The third president, Mwai Kibaki, also hailed from Nyeri in central Kenya, and the current president, Uhuru Kenyatta, is son to the first president. Rais mstafu wa kwanza wa hili taifa mzee Moi alipochukua uongozi alifuata footsteps za kiongozi wa kwanza aliyatenga makabila mawili makubwa Kenya hii ambayo yalikuwa yanashikilia siasa ya hapa Mkikuyu na Mjaluo enzi za Moi Kenya eh, Moi, Moi ungeenda ukikuyuni walikuwa wanatengwa sana wachache sana walikuwa wanasikika pale kisiasa ungeenda Luonyanza walikuwa wamefinywa sana Sasi mekuja hivi kipige hiyo mpake mefika mahali ambapo Raila Amolo Odinga yeye mwenyewe. Mimi ni kikumbuka tuo tu. Halipo sema kibaki tosha. Halitaka kumaliza uo ukabila. Juyo kusema kibaki tosha ukiona pale palikuwa na mkikuyu, palikuwa na mjaluo, palikuwa na mkisi, palikuwa na mkuria kama mimi, palikuwa na mluya. Mambo ya kabalika, lakini sasa kibaki halipo ingia. Tena kukatokea wale wanaona kwamba a ah, hii ni yetu. Sasa Raila kawa anatengwa kidogo. The areas from which all these presidents come from are said to have benefited with better infrastructure and social welfare. But what is their story? It is a smooth ride to Othaya in Nyeri County, where the third president, Mwai Kibaki of Kenya, was born. Most of the roads are tarmacked, and amenities such as hospitals and schools can be seen along the way. A drive to central Kenya brings us to Othaya, in fact, right across former President Mwai Kibaki's homestead. This is Givinji Karumba's farm. He has lived here for the longest time that he remembers and was neighbor to former President Mwai Kibaki for 10 years. Now, you would imagine that to have such a position would come with some sort of privilege. His is an ordinary life and an ordinary home. And even though he lives a stone throw away from the former president, the two have not met for almost 10 years. Kibaki, akiwa na chale hapa, tinakuedaga hapa, dani. Ni kuigia, kiozi kuogea. Wakati wajia, tunaigia hapa, 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 tu. Anatumita mii, majani, tukaigia. Tukaigia. Tuku muoda, ni mkule pa muoda. Wakati machale, machale, kama hiyo. Tunakuwa wakati, alikuwa na uzi mkale, alikuja hapa, samani. He says his community benefited a lot from producing a president, 
adding that while a president must ensure development across the country, charity must begin at home. Mabariko hivi tuona hapa hapa odaya, ni mabwa ya balabala, mabwa ya maji, hapa tuko na stima, niko na stima. Balabala ni lami hapa. Masomo, aisema ni bulu, ni bulu. Givinji is, however, quick to clarify that as an individual, he has gained no riches at all just by living across from the president for 10 years. I don't think that if the president is going to be able to get rid of it, he will be able to get rid of it. He will be able to get rid of it. He says he has had to work very hard, just like any other Kenyan, in order to provide for his family. Tulifanya kazi na mikono. Tulijaza yu mafomu, hakupatio pesa. Mimi ni mejejeza yu pesa, ni kujaza, ni kujaza, kila mwaka. Mungu ni msuri wala mwemaisa wagapi. Tumine kole, bia kupatio pesa, CDF. Hata mwaka hii ni lijaza, ni lijaza. Kupatio. Sasa ni mechoka la CDF ya odaya. One of the biggest political fallacies in our country is that if your tribesman is the head of state, then somehow that will translate to a material gain on your part, that you'll accrue some benefits because of that. Politicians, heads of state who are politicians, act out of personal or political interest. So if any benefits that you accrue from that are a byproduct, they, they are circumstantial. They're not because they're not born out of the head of state's kindred spirit with you as their tribesman. The peasant farmer in Gatundu and the fisherman in the shores of Lake Victoria have comparable poverty. Their access to the president is exactly the same. This is an opinion shared by some other residents of Vodaya. Najua president siyo ati ni ati kisasa juu nwa apa ati anakuza tu apa. Ni Kenya yote. Amejari kwa taka ni unaona saka uhuru. Unaona sasa si ati ya tu ati anakuja anendeleza apa ama apa kuwa ukiambu. Unaona sasa it is clear that incumbent president Uhuru Kenyatta continues to enjoy massive support from his backyard in the run-up to the general election. Many here insist that President Kenyatta has been president not just for the Kikuyu but for all Kenyan people. <laughs> Back in Nairobi's Huruma estate, just opposite Ndugula's eatery, Shadrach Onyango makes perfectly rounded chapatis. He has been in this business for three years. His chapatis are very tasty too. Shadrach is a man of ideologies. He doesn't see why anyone's vote would be influenced by ethnicity. He also feels that development projects have been commissioned for the benefit of all Kenyans and not just specific ethnic tribes. Okay, to the same Machakos in Mendele, to the same Kisumu in Mendele, to know that Pia Barabaras in Ateneso Nakisasa, and now Pia Natumona Pia Port, Kisumu, okay, eh, uh, an opinion that is not shared in some of the opposition strongholds. We have a lot of people who are
na huyu mwingine haja qualify ndegeza juu na kabila yako utamchukua utaacha huyu mwingine amehitimu basi natuumiza so utapata huyu kazi yake kwa chini juu haja qualify hiyo kazi anafanya Shadrack seems to know one major way with which to slay the dragon of tribalism in Kenya once and for all. Okay, Prince said ya kuna tribalism no iko. Yeah, don't say ma kuna. Na hiyo ndio kitu kubwa inapatikana kama sasa mimi ni mjaluo wewe ni mkikuyu. Okay, as in it a marriage ni sasa idea sana. Kumaliza tribalism. Ya jukiwa, okay, sasa ni mwa mkikuyu mimi ni mjaluo ni mwa kutusaidia katikali. Sasa nimejua nikienda kuvamia kikuyu na vamia watu wetu. Unaona hata watoto tunavaa tunaza hawana hawana kabila mjaluo ni wao mkikuyu ni wao sasa unaona sasa itasaidia sana the idea of a negotiated democracy is one that has also been suggested as one that would boost a sense of inclusivity among kenyans daisy says that this would mean a well calculated political formula that would seek to address the perception of exclusion by some communities and so this calls us to then um re-examine and reimagine our our democracy in my view we should look at concepts like consociational democracy where we are saying how do we fit this um, political competition to our context and our context is a divided society along ethnic lines so do we expand the executive do we have a rotational presidency do we what, what do we do it's about um, asking those questions the constitution is supposed to work for the people not the other way around and if we leave this address then we will be left with cyclical um, tension that in my view is unnecessary according to daisy kenya's ethnic differences precedes the colonialism era she says it started being an issue when colonialists and post-colonial Kenyan leaders then institutionalized ethnicity for their own selfish gain. Tribalism or ethnic identity politics has been around for a long time. Only now it has become, only post-colonial, uh, post-colonially it became um, institutionalized. And now even without um, legal institutionalization it's fomented so much it's 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 systemic it is it is ingrained and at election time the promises are lofty and the idea of tribe is never far away from the rhetoric this is the last revolution because this revolution is pegged on constitutional revolution that we promulgated in 2010 we are calling it the last revolution because basically the Constitution right now has provided us with the framework of revolutionizing this country politically, economically, socially, and culturally. We want to inform people from all walks of life, people from all, all shades of life, that if within NASA government, it will not matter, your name will not matter. Kenya has paid a huge price for inflamed ethnic passions. The 2007-2008 post-election violence was ethnically targeted. As many as 1,400 people died within a span of 59 days, while 600,000 people were displaced from their homes as Kenya slipped dangerously close to civil war. Many Kenyans, young, old, and from different ethnic backgrounds now preach the peace message in spite of political, ideological, and ethnic differences. Kisi kama vijana tunamasishana ili tuangalie tuende, tuangalie, tuandamane na viongozi ambao watatuletea maendeleo. Yeah. Sia tu viongozi ambao watatukunganisha. Yeah, yondo tunangalia. Mwaka 207, kale niliona, ndiyo naomba upande ya kwangu, izike itendeke. Tuwe na amani, na itupate, kiongozi hula niyaza kulinda ingi kwa njia mzuri. The gospel of peace is one that many are preaching, and graffiti artist Bank Slave is one of them. It's about 1 a.m. on this particular day, when the rest of Nairobi is asleep, 
Bank Slave is busy painting messages of peace on the walls of Nairobi. They say in Swahili, msanini kiyoche jami. So I try to um, share what I see, what I see and what is happening around me, around my society. And I try to bring out social issues, sometimes political, uh, and mostly about peace, you know, spreading the word of peace because we don't want to see what happened in the 2007 election. Bank Slave is considered the pioneer of graffiti art in Nairobi and was one of the artists who were involved in the Kibera Walls of Peace project that sought to promote peace in Kibera after the post-election violence of 2007. We did like a huge train with a lot of graffiti from uh, Kikuyu and, and, and Nairobi, I mean Kibera. So where, where the train tracks were, were damaged at, at the election time. And this was a powerful message because these trains go to these uh, two communities, two, two places where they, like, they have a larger dominating or polarization of communities. So uh, this, this was just to calm people down and I think it worked because we didn't have um, like any, any of those uh, clashes last election. Ten years later, his message to Kenyans is one, that they should celebrate the beauty of their diversity, not use it to propagate hate. My message to Kenyans is that, you know, we had a president in South Africa called Mandela and we want to emulate that. Uh, you know, in, in Kenya, we want to have that person who doesn't love power uh, to, to an extent that they make people fight. And, you know, Kenyans should look at who they are voting for and see that we have a bright, brighter country, a better country than what we, we always are being told, the rhetoric. If you think about it, ethnicity or the diversity in our ethnicity is one of the most celebrated things in our country. <clears throat> and that's reflected in our entertainment industry. It's reflected in the, on the ads that you see on TV. It's reflected on the kind of um, comedy that we find truly humorous. <laughs> Across Kenya, the beauty of tribe is celebrated, but on the political front, age-old ethnic rivalries come alive every election year as a sense of exclusion comes back with a vengeance. Is it a myth or a reality of life that the distribution of the so-called national cake follows the direction of the presidential flag? The tension surrounding presidential elections suggest that a lot is at stake, and whether President Kenyatta gets another term in office or Raila Odinga snatches the crown from him, the conversations at Ndugula's restaurant are unlikely to change until it is truly the turn of every Kenyan to eat. Sharon Momani, KTN News.